What's up, Cal Gang? So we got the statics problem today. The goal is to find the force in each one of these members. So let's just go get started because it's going to take a little while. So when we're doing this, we want to go joint by joint. So we want to start here and maybe work our way down. So the easiest way and the reason we're going to start at C is because there's the least amount of um, like forces here. So if you look at any one, C is just going to have this known force and then these two unknown forces. If we start here, there's only two we have to find and we can do two equations to find those two unknowns. Whereas if we were to start at D, there's going to be three unknowns here. If we start at E, there's four unknowns. Start at A, there's three unknowns. B, there's four unknowns. So that's why we're going to start at C, because there's the least amount of unknowns there. So let's do that. So we want to draw a corresponding diagram at each one of these points. So let's start at C. So we're at C. We have here. So we have, of course, P2 is pushing down. And then we want to assume that every one of these forces is in tension. And the reason we're going to do that is just going to make things a lot simpler for us. If we assume they're all in tension, it's a lot easier to keep track of what's going on. And then we find out that if we get a negative number, that means that we're actually in compression. So that's why we're going to go ahead and assume that everything's in tension. So we have this over here. This is CD. And then we have up here, this is BC. And we know that this is 30 degree angle. So it's a little small of a drawing, but you know, you gotta figure out what's going on here. So let's start with some of the forces in the y direction, because we know P2, so we can find BC. Some of the forces y is equal to zero, negative P2 plus BC, and then we're gonna take sine 30. So then we're just going to go ahead and move one of these over, divide by sine of 30. You're going to find that BC is equal to 8 kilonewtons. And that's in tension. All right, so we figured out one of them. Uh, I'm not going to go through each problem or each step of math because it's going to extend this video way too long. So I'm just going to assume that you can do this on your own because we know P2 already. So then let's go ahead and do some of the forces in the X. So some of the forces X is equal to 0 is equal to so what do we have, right? We have negative CD, but then we're also subtracting BC uh, cosine of 30 this time, right? So to move one of these over, it's gonna be CD is equal to negative BC, so it's gonna be minus eight cosine of 30. So that means that we're gonna get a negative number for CD, right? CD is gonna be negative something. So CD, calculate that, is equal to negative 6.93 kilonewtons. And because we got a negative number, that means that we're in compression. Perfect. So that's all we can do at this point. We figured out our two unknowns there. Time to move on to our next point. So now we know these two forces, right? So if we go to B, we're going to know one of these, but we're still going to have three unknowns. So that's no good. But if we go to D, then we know this one. So there's just two unknowns left. So let's go to B, or D, I mean. So D, we're at D. We got downward P1 to the right, because we're assuming it's in tension. We got CD upwards. We got BD, and then over here, we got DE. Cool, so this is a really simple force body diagram. So let's start with some of the forces in the Y direction. We know it's equal to zero, we're in equilibrium. So we got negative P1, P1 is pushing down, and then plus BD. So move BD over, we're gonna get BD is equal to P1, is equal to four kilonewtons, not BD. BD is equal to 4 kilonewtons. And we get a positive number, so we're in tension. So let's do some of the forces in the X now. Zero. So we got negative DE plus CD. So move one of these over, you're going to get that DE is equal to CD. And we know that CD is a negative number, so that means that DE is also going to be a negative number. Negative 6.93 kilonewtons. Now we know that that's got to be compression because we got a negative number. All right, so we've done everything we can do here. Time to go ahead and move on to the next part. So now where do we go, right? So if we go to E, we got we know this force, but we don't know this force, and we've got two unknowns here because we have a pin. So three unknowns at E, we can't go there. But if we go up to B, we know this force and this force, and these two are unknown. And that's going to be perfect because these are the two left that we don't know yet. So all we have to do is go to B and figure it out at B. So let's draw a force body diagram at B. Uh, so this one's gonna be a little harder, so it's gonna be BD. Then we got CD as in tension, so this is gonna be, or BC I mean, BC. So we got AB is pushing this way, and 
we got BE is pushing down this way. Right. Now we know that these are all 30 degree angles. So this angle, this angle, and this angle are all equal to 30 degrees. So now we run into a problem, right? If we do some of the forces in the x direction, we have two unknowns. If we do some of the forces in the y direction, we have two unknowns. And we can definitely do that, right? That means we have a, uh, what's it called? I don't know. Uh, it's a system of equations, right? We can definitely just plug one into the other. So feel free to try going out that way. But I have a trick for you guys. What you can do is you can rotate this entire force body diagram by a certain degree. And so let's do that. Let's rotate it by 30 degrees this way and see what happens. So now we have this. This is B. So now this is going to become BC and AB, right? So you see what I did? I just rotated it like 30 degrees that way. So then now BD is at this angle here. This is 60 degrees. And then BE acts here. This is also 60 degrees. So you can totally do this. This is totally allowed. And then now what happens is we can take some of the forces in the y direction. We know BD, and it's going to find BE really easily. All right, so let's do that. So some of the forces in the y is equal to 0. So we got negative BE. And then it's going to be, um, so it's going to be sine of 60. And then minus BD sine of 60. So these signs are going to cancel out. You're going to get that B. B is equal to negative BD. Right? So then we know that BD, or let's see, we know BD is 4 kilonewtons. That means that BE has to be equal to negative 4 kilonewtons. Right? And that means that we're in compression if we have a negative 4. All right, my marker is dying on me. These markers go quickly. Hopefully this one lasts me a little longer. So let's get rid of this. Let's do some of the forces in the x direction. So some of the forces in the x is going to be a little bit harder because we have four. But we know three of them, so pretty easy still. So some of the forces in the x is equal to zero. So it's negative AB minus BE cosine of 60 plus BD cosine of 60 plus BC. So we're solving for AB, so let's just go ahead and move AB to the other side. All right, so, ne so then this is going to become positive over here, so it's going to be minus BE. So minus negative 4, so it's going to be positive 4 cosine of 60. Then we're adding BD, so BD is a positive 4, so it'll be again plus 4 cosine of 60. And then plus BC, so BC is plus 8. So you plug that in, you get that AB is equal to 12 uh, kilonewtons. And that is a positive number, so that means we're in tension. So there we go, so we found one, two, three, four, five, six. There's six uh, beams there, so we figured it all out. In only eight minutes, dude, that's really good. I did really good. Okay, so if you have any questions, feel free to check out my channel. I got a couple playlists, or I got a couple uh, videos just like this in my playlist. And ask any questions in the comments below, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.